जनरल व्यूइंग Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it is exactly 13 minutes past 8 o'clock on this 27th day of April 2023 and equivalent to 7th day of Shawwal 1444 my name is Faisal Qasim and welcome to live real talk i'm so excited to be back after ramadan break and i hope that you are equally excited we are back alhamdulillah and what better topic to come back with rather than financial discussions in this tough economic situation and tonight we are talking about the KCB Sahal banking KCB one of the biggest boys in the financial sector in this country not just a banking partner but the ideal money partner get the difference not banking but money they're not just saving you money but they're telling you how you can benefit more from your money of course in a halal mana that is kcb sahal bank in the studio tonight i am honored and delighted to have one of the amazing great brains for as far as matters islamic finance is concerned i'm talking about mr halkan assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi how are you sir i'm well okay salam thank you so much mr mola halkan is the head of uh, islamic kcb sahal banking and previously had a director position at the national uh, amana bank that is still in kenya mr molo karibu sana bwana ceo shukran sana shukran thank you so much for making time for us this evening thank you very much for having me kcb sahal banking one of the institutions with the strongest financial muscles for as far as islamic finance is concerned in this country you are an experienced experienced banker over time the first fully fledged operationalization of islamic banking started in 2008 sure in this country right right now we are talking about 15 years later into the game as a player in the industry what do you think are the greatest achievements that islamic banking has made in this financial sector or in this economy that we're living in over the 15 years they have been existing into the game Thank you very much brother. Uh, exactly 15 years as you said from the first time when uh, Islamic banking was experimented with in Kenya. Mm-hmm. That was in 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, surely that came in with a, the attempt or the aim of giving uh, people choices. The Muslim uh, clientele or the Muslim population within the country mm-hmm. did not have the option or, of choosing products in the banks and many were uh, basically withholding Mm-hmm. Or, or they were just staying away from doing uh, banking as, mm-hmm. as 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 a service provision yeah so basically from that time yeah. we started with a few uh, with one full, two full fully fledged islamic banks then the windows came in, came in mm-hmm. um, those muslims who for the purpose of sharia compliance were not able to enjoy those products you do not go to the banks to take a mortgage that is based on interest you don't go to the bank to take a mortgage uh, and a working capital that is based on yeah, interest just, etc yeah. so all the ba- all the banks pro- uh, financial pro- uh, services then were based on interest which definitely as we know in islam is totally prohibited so from that time those mu- of, uh, of muslim faith who for the purpose of meeting sharia requirement and therefore the religious uh, 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 prerogative of uh, abstaining from taking interest based financial services have now been enabled to be able to enjoy the banking services fully okay uh, many of, uh, of of the muslims in, the, in in our country by that time uh, you know the muslims are complaining we don't get uh, fully banked we are not fully banked okay for with that now we have seen a growth of the of the industry especially in the in the in the islamic uh, compl- sharia compliant banking mm-hmm. currently we have uh, three fully fledged uh, so in fact four fully fledged four fully, four, bank. four fully fledged banks yeah. and around three windows and i think between them currently we are talking of about 500,000 customers totally in total between all all, all 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 the players in the market mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the uh, customer deposit mobilization we are talking in terms of about 100 billion roughly 
Okay, the windows, of course, don't publish their financials separately. Definitely, yeah. But the, the information that we have from, from colleagues within the industry, an mm -hmm. estimate of about 100 billion in, 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 in total asset, and possibly another 60 or 70 billion in uh, financing, or what you would call loans in the conventional side of, of, of the banking. So it has enabled many Muslims, many Muslims who otherwise, pr prior to the introduction of Islamic banking, were not able to be fully banked within the financial system. So basically you're trying to say that, yes, initially there was a gap which was pretty evident and then after that now you, the players, came in and tried to fill that void that was there, right? That is very true. Fifteen years later, can you confidently say that the community, the Kenyan community, let's say the Kenyan market, right, have fully embraced Islamic banking together with its products and services? Well, uh, not really fully embraced yet, but we've made a lot of strides. If, let's say, we were to talk in terms of percentages, approximately mm -hmm. possibly, we can say we've had about 50% market penetration in the, within the Muslim community. The reason for this, of course, is that this is a new service. Uh, 15 years is not such a long period of time. Yeah. Okay? So there are still a lot of doubts. Uh, and one of the reasons why these doubts has persisted is a bit of misconception. Mm -hmm. When uh, Muslims come to the uh, Sharia offering uh, banks, the thing that they normally take as a priority is the pricing of the product. Mm. So they say, I go to Bank X, which is a, a conventional bank, and I want to take a mortgage, mm -hmm. which I'm told is going to be priced at, say, 10%. 10%. I come to you and you're also offering me the same. <laughs> so without really getting to know the underlying contractual obligation of the parties. And the dynamics. And the dynamics. Mm -hmm. And then the Sharia, requ Sharia, Sharia compliance requirement. Mm -hmm. it's most of the customers... Muslims, mm -hmm. that is, would tend to use the pricing factor. And if it's not differentiated between the convention and, this, and, and Islamic uh, uh, windows or banks, mm -hmm. then they tend to say, no, definitely there's not any differences. Mm. So, so this has been from the surface level. From, from the, the surface value. level without basically getting into the details. Mm. What aspect makes this product Sharia compliant? Okay? Yeah. You may not be able just to determine it by one factor or pricing. Because as we know, pricing does not make a product halal or non-halal. You cannot go to a butchery, for example, one operated by a Muslim, the, the animal, beef, let's say, cow has been slaughtered in the Islamic Sharia uh, uh, principles, mm -hmm. and one operated by a non-Muslim, and he possibly did not follow uh, the principles, uh, the principles yeah. just took uh, something and killed the animal, because for him, the and the justifies, justifies the, the means, means. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And if they do are selling the meat at the same price, retail price of say 400 shillings per kilo, surely for a Muslim it is not the price that would determine from which butcher is he going to buy the meat. I but unfortunately it. we have this problem of uh, most people uh, tending to determine the accept acceptability of the product based merely on one factor out of the many, so and that is the pricing. Basically you're trying to say that a lack of knowledge has clearly catalyzed the lack of embracing fully of these products and services. Totally true. There are a lot of, a lot of uh, lack, lack, lack of uh, uh, knowledge of the product uh, and also a lot of misconception. Mm. One other misconception that we normally come across is a customer comes and says, I want to buy, say, some building material. He expects the bank to own those material because let's say we do it on the contract of Murabaha. Yeah. I buy and or I, 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 I own something and I sell it to you. Now, they expect that the bank should be having warehouses where they will be storing these goods to sell to them. Okay? But there are Sharia compliant aspects, there are Sharia compliant mechanisms through which, although the bank does not normally stock these stocks in trade, but the bank can still enable the customer to buy these goods from, from the owner and then sell to you at a markup. So, a lot of misconceptions. Uh, okay, gradually we are getting out of it, customers are getting to understand those who. Uh, I think it takes some time to really understand mm -hmm. uh, what this is all about. Mm -hmm. But still, there's a lot of uh, uh, education that needs to be done to the population. Thanks so much for that. Um, Fifteen years again into the game. As you've said, it's not such a long time. It's a short time and uh, it's a work in progress. You keep on learning, sure. you keep on improving and all that. So my, 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 my curiosity is drawn. How do you as KCB Sahal Banking and, any, uh, and, and many other players into the industry limit yourselves within the precincts of Sharia, yet the regulatory body is not governed by the Islamic Sharia. Uh, how do you manage to do that? Thank, thank you, brother. One of the issues that we normally face, and I, I think it's not only in the banking generally, but the society as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'm sure you may have heard of some young men even saying, 
even paying taxes to the government is haram. <laughs> because it's not, a, it's not, it's not an Islamic state. institution. Yeah. But we are part of the society of Kenya, isn't it? Yeah. So what normally also we get to hear people say is, how can you uh, claim to be compliant yes. while the regulator, the Central Bank of Kenya, yes. is interest-based? Okay, they are not regulatory frameworks separate for Islamic banks from, from the, the conventional, conventional bank. bank. Yeah. Okay, so those challenges are there. Those 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 qu sort of questions and doubts still linger to a very big extent. No. That in fact people would even say very broadly and very loudly that you cannot claim to be Sharia compliant while you are regulator. Is the Central Bank of Kenya is not is, 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 is not, is not uh, Sharia based. Yeah. But basically what the Central Bank has done is to allow banks to operate within the principles of Sharia. All they do is to ask you if let's say today you are to open a, a bank that is Sharia based, Sharia compliant, mm -hmm. is what will you do? What are some of the things that you will put in place to ensure that you meet the Sharia requirements? And the Central Bank has also let the banks do their work according to the Sharia compliance guided by their independent internal Sharia boards, okay? okay. So the central bank has basically, although there's not any um, regulat different regulatory framework so far, but they have given us that window to operate within what we know or what the Sharia board advises to be Sharia compliant. So, so there is a bit of, they us, are flexible, for they are flexible, exactly. For as far as dealing with Islamic uh, institutions are concerned, so within, or Sharia products. Within the Sharia product, of course, we are still within, uh, bound by the, by, by, by the rules of law and the regulation of the country. So long as anything that you do is not against the, against the laws of the land, definitely the endorse is, is, is allowed. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I was in, uh, in, in another bank before, Samia's bank, yeah. and uh, the auditors came to auditors from Central Bank, no Central Bank auditors come go around auditing banks. Mm -hmm. uh, so they came and found something that they did not understand, how we treated, for example, a Murabaha product, yeah. a, a facility that was based on Murabaha that we gave to one of our clients. So basically Murabaha is, you agree on a profit share basis for a given period of time, and so when they came, they found that this particular contract had gone beyond the agreed date by three months. So they said, these three months that the, uh, since the expiry of the contract, okay, conventional, what would have happened? You would continue, having accrue, uh, continue accruing the interest. Okay, interest. So they yeah. said the three months that you've not charged this customer any, any return for the bank mm -hmm. is a violation of the central bank uh, requirement. We had to explain to them that this is based on Sharia. Mm -hmm. This was based on what we call Muraba contract. Yeah. It was for an agreed period of time. And the extension was not caused by the customer's negligence, but because the customer had not gotten the payment. So central bank allowed such kind of flexibility. So the central bank, although there is not a, a, I mean separate regulatory framework, but has allowed the Islamic banks to operate on Some the Sharia flexibility. basis. flexibility. Yes. Interesting. Now that we are already, alhamdulillah, convinced that, you know what, Islamic banking is go. We need to go and govern through the Sharia precincts like when it comes to our money, because at the end of the day, we are going to be accountable as Muslims, sure. right? About what we consume and how we transact our business. What are <coughs> My question then would be, as a businessman, right? What would be the benefits for me as a businessman to take or rather to engage or to embrace Islamic banking vis-a-vis -vis the conventional banking. You've just mentioned one about the Murabaha aspect yeah. of which I'm sure our viewers and even myself sitting here in the studio, I still like to know more about it. I mean, what, what, how does it work, the Murabaha and the Musharak and some of these things? So generally, for business people out there, they're watching us. Why would they then consider to go the Islamic banking route vis-a-vis -vis the conventional banking route? Thank you, brother. For a Muslim, First and foremost, the most important thing is that you are getting banking services which are compliant with Sharia. Yeah. Okay? So you are out of riba. Mm -hmm. We guarantee you that you will not anymore be uh, bound by the burden of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, paying interest or usury yeah. or riba. Okay? That's the most important thing mm -hmm. for me and you as a Muslim yeah. that we know that what the product offering, the product and services that we are getting mm -hmm. are basically meet the requirement of our faith as Muslims. Okay. Now, if you look world over, the uh, Islamic banking assets is still say to be about two one to two percent of the total global uh, banking uh, assets. Very small, but it is the fastest growing. Even it's in the- It's estimated that it's, uh, it's going to worth 11.9 billion US dollars yeah. by the end of this year. Trillion. 
trillion, trillion, trillion US dollars, yes. Exactly, trillion. 11.3 trillion dollars yeah. by the end of this year, inshallah, yeah, it will be. Inshallah. Now, if you look at globally also, <coughs> Islamic banking has been embraced not only within the Muslim uh, countries, but world over. For example, in 2013, I think 2013, mm -hmm. uh, UK issued the first sukuk, Sharia compliant Islamic yeah. bonds. N uh, now, the Chinese have also started translating the Sharia standards that is uh, issued by AOFI. AOFI is accounting and auditing organization for Islamic financial institutions mm -hmm. that, of, that issues the Sharia standards to be followed for each product offering by Islamic banks. No. They have taken a lot of interest and now they are, they are actually translating that, uh, those standards so that they can introduce Islamic banking in their country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is it that there is so much hype about Islamic banking? One of the issues definitely is because of the uh, uh, ethical aspect of the Islamic banking. Ethical aspect because in conventional banking, the relationship between the bank and the customer is that of a debtor and a creditor. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. The bank has lent the money to the customer. The customer has to pay back that money. Regardless. With, with regardless of whether he has made, has made a, a return or a profit on that money, he has to repay. And if you don't pay, then the, cost of the bank, irrespective of any other consideration, they will still go after your security and realize the security. And even if the process of the security is not enough to liquidate the debt, they will still go after your private means. They can even commit you to civil jail, trying to get the money to the last cent out of you. Mm -hmm. Now, in Islamic banking, we have the principle of what we call the profit and loss sharing, a partnership. Okay? If things go wrong, definitely then it is not only the customer that bears the, the burden of the loss, yeah. but this loss is also shared as much as the profit is shared. So there's a lot of ethical considerations, which is not there in the, Islamic, in, in, in the conventional banks. I'll give you an example. Assume today you buy a vehicle, just a private use vehicle, say for 10 million. You take a facility of, say, on the basis of Musharaka, partnership between the bank and you. Mm -hmm. You take a, a facility of 7 million, sorry, facility of 10, 7 million, and you put in 3 million as your bank contribution. Now, in the, on the basis of Musharaka or partnership financing, equity participation financing, we are owners, or stakeholder owners in this asset. Okay. Bank, 70%, the customer, 30%. 30%. So assume, after some time, when the customer has paid out of the principal, say, 1 million, mm -hmm. which means that the stake of the bank has reduced from 70 to 60. 60. And the customer has increased has from increased. 30 to 40. Yeah. So at this particular point in time, and therefore, at that particular point in time, what happens? The bank's Liability to the customer's liability to the bank is seven, uh, six, six million, for example. Assume this guy is stolen or got lost, in, you know, I mean, burnt, uh, involved in an accident, stolen, okay? Mm -hmm. Then assume we now go to the, uh, the, the, the Kaful and Islamic Sharia compliant insurance. Mm -hmm. We go to the insurance and they pay us, say, seven million, okay? Yeah. Or say, seven, seven million, what would happen? Conventionally, the bank will take the six million of its outstanding loan. Okay? And, then and give you the one million extra. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. In Islamic banking, what would happen is we take that seven million and we share it in the, uh, uh, in the, share in the shares that, that we was were, there that was as at the time when the, uh, the, 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 the vehicle was destroyed. Wow. So the bank will take 60% of seven million, which is 4.2 million, and your customer will take 40% of the seven, uh, 7 million, which is 2.8. So this is the Musharak aspect? That is the Musharak aspect. Now what it happened, what it means is that the bank's facility loan at that time was 6 million, but it only got the share of the process of the insurance compensation or even, uh, let's say, scrap value of the vehicle of 4.2 million. So the bank will sell off the one, I mean, they will have to write off the 1.8 million. So they write it off? They will write it off and they will not go after you because we are sharing, we are partners. Nice. Because that, 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 that was consideration the that was lingering that, in my head. Exactly. That consideration will not fight in, you will not fight it in any conventional bank. So the you write it off and you write off as exactly. bad debts or exactly. of course or losses or of course unless how do you then uh, register in your books? Unless that loss was caused by you, you as a customer, <coughs> your negligence may have caused that. If the if, if if the loss of the vehicle was not caused by your negligence, then definitely that's the the, 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 the way to go. So that kind of consideration, profit and loss sharing. Okay. Does that then translate to even businesses deliver loan this, for yes, example, yes, exactly. talk of business, for example, in the um, real estate or any other business whatsoever? Exactly. Does it translate? It does. It does. Of course, also unlike in conventional, you know, in conventional, the, 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 the contract between the bank and the customer yeah. when money is being lent mm -hmm. is that of a debt and a creditor. It's a loan contract. 
irrespective of whether it is asset finance, whether it is working capital, mm -hmm. whatever it is, is always a loan contract. But in Islamic financing, in Islamic banking, the biggest differentiator is that each of the financing will also be based on specific contracts, mm -hmm. which has got its own rules and regulations. For example, I've explained the case of the Murab uh, Musharaka. Musharaka. Muraba will be different and other forms of financing. Would Muraba also. then be uh, a loose translation of asset financing? Uh, well, you can do asset financing in Muraba, huh? but basically Muraba we use for short-term financing, short-term financing where the capital providers actually just the bank, not the customer. The customer does not contribute anything to us, the purchase of the asset that is required and for a short-term short period. So you buy something at a price that is known to both parties yeah. and sell to the customer at a markup or we put a profit and sell to the customer and then they allow the customer to pay you in whichever method you have agreed, either an installment or on a monthly basis, as quarterly, you agree. it is as you agree. Wow. And that wow. price is fixed, it does not change. Wow, that is wisdom oozing from Molu Halkano, who is the head of KCB Sahal Banking. <coughs> Here in studio, educating and informing us about Islamic finance and everything there is to learn about Islamic finance within a 45 minutes show. Ladies and gentlemen, our beloved viewers, drop in your question. I've seen some of you trying to already put in your question, sending in your text. I'm seeing <coughs> our Facebook, we are streaming live as well. Some people are coming there. I see Abdul Ismail, I see Shaban Nakitare. You guys are all coming, among as many other people, sending me DMs. Thank you so much. Keep on streaming, keep on commenting. Let's know what questions do you have. Our SMS line and our WhatsApp numbers are streaming on your screens, right? Are scrolling on your screens right now. But we need to pay our bills in the studio right here tonight. After that, we're going to come back with many more to learn about Islamic finance and particularly KCB Sahal Banking. Please don't you go away. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Verse of the day. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا Uislamu ni dini yenye mpangilio ulio kamili na taratibu zake humpa fursa kila nja kuifahamu na kuelewa. Islamu yoyote lazima achukue jukumu la kuifahamu dini yake. Kuanzia kwenye shahada ashhadu nakiri kwa moyo kisha usafi wa kimwili. Hapo ndipo huanza safari ya kumwabudu Mola wake. Usikose kujenga nasi. Kila siku ya Jumamosi live kwenye kipindi ufahamu Uislamu ili ujifunze mengi usiyojua kutoka Horizon TV. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. يا ايها الذين امنوا اذا نودي للصلاه من يوم الجمعه فاسعوا فاسعوا الى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم ان كنتم تعلمون اني مليو اميني منapo itwa kuhudhuria sala ya ijumaa fanyeni haraka kuikimbilia muache biashara zenu hilo ni bora ikiwa mwelewa isikilizeni kwa umakinifu khutba ya Ijumaa ili uzidi kujenga imani yako na kupata faida nyingi 
ya siku hii. Coming to you every Friday from Jamia Mosque Nairobi. Live on Horizon TV. is about facts and here on the Muslim Insight we go beyond the headlines. The Kadis, apart from being judicial officials, they are also critical members of our society. We look at all the angles of the story as we bring stories that matter to you. I am totally convinced generations to come will have the office of the Chief Kadi. Join us on the Muslim Insights as we bring you the weekly news recap. Every Friday from 8 a.m. only on Horizon TV. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks so much for keeping it live, Royal Talk. My name is Faisal Qasim and in studio I'm having an amazing gentleman, a voice of authority, ocean of knowledge that is none other than Mr. Mola Halkano, who is the head of, his, of uh, KCB Sahal Banking, educating us about Islamic finance and what is there to know about Islamic finance, and in particular, KCB Sahal Banking. Mr. Molu, I mean, 15 years, and you've mentioned some crazy figures, 100 billion, 67 billion in terms of um, finance, in terms of liquid uh, or other loans that have been issued so far, or which in general, it adds up into the uh, general value of the industry. We've mentioned the way by the end of this year, Islamic finance or halal finance is estimated to worth at least 11.9 trillion US dollars globally. These are huge figures. Locally, in the country, can you confidently say that the Islamic finance sector has been able to support the economy in one way or another, the general economy? Sure, sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you Brother Faisal. Yes, it has, it has. Uh, and as I said, those figures, <coughs> you know, the uh, over 500,000 customers mm -hmm. numbers, the 100 billion or so in terms of customer deposit, mm -hmm. over 60, possibly 60 to 70 billion in financing or mm -hmm. what you would call loans in the, in the, in the conventional banks. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all indicative of definitely the contribution that Islamic banking or Islamic finance has played in the country. Yeah. There is still a lot that we can do. There's a lot of, still a lot of opportunities to explore. Mm -hmm. But uh, given the time period and being a very new product in the market with very little in terms of knowledge, and even manpower in the within within the industry, yeah. customer understanding also being very low. But so far, I think yes, we are in the right path. We are in the right tra trajectory. Uh, hopefully, uh, we may see uh, entrance uh, of, of of new banks and uh, other banks also opening windows. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon. Uh, so there is a lot. There's a lot that we have done. Uh, and there's a lot more that we can still do. And it's already quantified. I mean, the, the, the value is not, the, or, the, or it's still a work in progress? Well, the values as to what we've so far achieved can be known, but the values in terms of how much more we can do, I think is as big as the economy is. You know, Islamic finance, of course, uh, uh, targeted the Muslim community so that they can get to be fully banked. But other faiths also, uh, they are enjoying this product. And Beautiful. People, yes. You just preempted my question because, I mean, there is a misconception that Islamic finance or halal finance is reserved particularly for the Muslims. How true is that? That's totally a very big misconception. Uh, and I can tell you emphatically that yes, it is open to all mm -hmm. without any discrimination. In fact, when a customer walks into any of our branches and he says he wants uh, Sharia compliant, for example, in our case, it's Sahal Banki. A customer walks in and says, I want Sahal Banki. We don't ask, ask him what his faith is. Okay? So long as, of course, he understands 
the principles and is willing to abide by the contractual obligation between the bank and the customer, of course. So there is not uh, any, any discrimination. It is open to everybody irrespective of their faith. And uh, irrespective of the background, status and or whatever, totally. for as long as it's a contractual agreement they comply with. Exactly, the they comply with. And of course, when we are giving the financing or the loans, like we call them in the conventional, mm -hmm. one very important uh, aspect for us, uh, the check that we do yeah. beyond what the conventional bank would do is what is the purpose of this facility? What is the purpose of this money that you want to take from us? Is it Sharia compliant? Okay, for example, takes the case and uh, what's, what might just look too obvious. Somebody says he's going to put up a hotel. Somebody says he's going to put a hotel where he's basically going to have entertainment, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll go beyond to ask what sort of entertainment. Okay, if there are swimming pools, for example, just as an example, mm -hmm. are there segregated swimming pools for ladies and for men? Because definitely it is not allowed for Sharia compliance purposes for men and women to mix in the same swimming pool and swim together, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the extra checks that we have to do to ensure that even what seems to be generally uh, not contradictory to Sharia, but we do a little bit more further checks to ensure that the customer understands our requirement to ensure that whatever goes in within the premises, if let's say it's a hotel or, a, or an entertainment place, mm -hmm. definitely meets the Sharia requirement. Uh, requirement. So, so long as that person who is not a Muslim, but is willing to comply with the with, with our requirement, mm -hmm. anybody can enjoy those products. Wow, beautiful. Uh, Mr. Molo, I, I, I'd like to know, 15 years into the industry again, you are a key ingredient, you are a key player in this industry, in the Kenyan financial sector. Key player. A lot has been done over the last 15 years. I mean, we've seen a number of um, conventional banking, putting mm -hmm. up windows, we've seen growth of many more players, we've seen more interest, as you've clearly put down the figures mm -hmm. as well, we've seen more people coming out and embracing. As a player, an integral player for that matter, who is at the center and has a bird's eye view of the whole industry. In your opinion, what are some of the gaps or loopholes that you feel as an industry are yet to be filled by the players, both the service providers and the clients? What do you think are some of the gaps that are yet to be filled? Thank you, Brother Faisal. Uh, le let, me, let me start from, from, from the, the, the central bank level, from the regulator's point. Of, uh, uh, point. Yeah. Uh, in 2016, uh, central bank and treasury engaged an organization called IFAS, I think they're called Islamic Financial Advisory Services, mm -hmm. based in the UK. Uh, the aim was to engage this uh, organization to come um, and come up with a regulatory framework for Islamic banking mm -hmm. and financing. Uh, which of course included not only the banks but also insurances, uh, uh, SACOs, any uh, financial service provider in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, this went on for quite a while, uh, but unfortunately I think um, uh, the contract of these uh, consultants mm -hmm. fell off, no. uh, it's yet to be re uh, re uh, reviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as of now, we still do not have a regulatory framework under central bank as a regulator of financial uh, uh, banking services. Yeah we don't have for specifically for Islamic banking. So for me, uh, the lack of regulatory framework is actually a very big gap mm -hmm. in the development of Islamic financing in Kenya. Yes, the government, the central bank has shown a lot of uh, goodwill, but I think they need to really focus on this and uh, uh, get this done. In Uganda, for example, I remember in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, they started with the regulatory framework. They came up with rules and regulations, which I am told was passed even up to the parliament mm -hmm. and is only waiting for the, uh, the, the president to ascend to, yeah. to, to, to ascend to. We didn't do that ourselves. We basically said, asked to the banks that came through, what Islamic banking is all about, how are you going to ensure that you are going to meet the Sharia requirement, while also observing the Central Bank Act, the, you know, the laws of the land. And uh, I think basically they were asking about, say, eight questions or so. I saw it when I was in uh, National Mana, mm -hmm. and uh, when I was uh, also in um, uh, Barclays, uh, then, uh, before it became AFSA. So they basically ask you a set of questions, mm -hmm. which if you say this is how we are going to do, they'll give you the license, okay? Now, beyond that, definitely we need to go so that this regulatory framework separate, but of course, within the laws of the land, needs to be there in place. So at the central bank level, there is that, there's that gap. I think there's need for us to have clear-cut clear uh, regulatory frameworks 
meeting Sharia requirement and of course meeting the laws of the land. So that's one issue that I think we are, we are uh, lagging behind. Mm -hmm. And I hope that in the near future, we may be able to reach that stage where basically we are going to have that regulatory framework. The other issue also, uh, the intent also of that uh, uh, initiative was we will have a national Sharia board. Uh, okay? Yeah. okay. They were say okay, all the banks will have their internal Sharia board, but at the national level, we have, we have one, one single body board. to which we will be able to refer disputes, for example, and their rule and, and, and their decision would be final. Currently, uh, if a customer, for example, disputes a product in Bank A, how does he resolve that issue? He can only go back to the Sharia board of that institution. Yeah. And if he's not satisfied, that would be the end. So that lack of central body, okay, central body that will be basically regulating and issuing fatwas, directives at the central bank level, that is also missing. Also, uh, uh, the intent also then was basically the, 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 population, the population to be educated, people to be educated, what this is all about. And there was going to be a lot of activities to that effect. We've never gone out as a country, except of course each, each bank, each bank to do their doing their own, own, their own yeah. education, their own um, uh, tr trying to educate their people. But at the national level, there's never been that uh, initiative to try to educate, educate people on what mm -hmm. this offering is all about. Yeah. So I think those gaps, uh, needs to be uh, covered. We also need to develop our manpower. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is very little in terms of uh, very knowledgeable people in the industry. I think currently, uh, of course, we gradually we are developing, but yeah. I think there is still a lot that needs to be done to develop our uh, uh, human resources. With these gaps, as yeah. at your level as KCB Sahel Banking, what have you tried to do at your level to try and see these gaps? All these loopholes are covered to the best of your ability. Uh, some of the things, initiative that we've done is basically to have an independent Sharia board. And by independent, I mean that the Sharia board basically guides the bank and their, uh, the, 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 their directives by, are binding on the bank. The bank gave them that undertaking and it has been enforced. Mm -hmm. Okay? So whatever it is that is with regard to compliance with Sharia, the words of the members of the Sharia board is fine and binding on the bank. Okay? And then we've also taken a lot of initiative to train these members. We've taken them to Malaysia, for example, taken to Dubai. 2019, we took them to Dubai for members training, of the Sharia board. members of the Sharia board. Okay. Well, last year, we took them to a uh, training again for almost 10 days in, du in uh, Bahrain. Mm -hmm. After that, also, uh, they had the opportunity to go and uh, participate in uh, an international Islamic finance conference, a two-day conference, so that we get an expo exposure to see what other markets are doing. And of okay. course, that's a benchmark. <coughs> that's a benchmark. Uh, exactly. That's how they're doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Because the, the, this conference, for example, and the training was organized by AOFI the standard setting body yeah. and basically the, the, that gave us the opportunity to be able to understand how they do it, are we doing it uh, according to the standards, okay, to try to uh, basically see what others do and how best, how we can improve on that. Then also the, what we have done in KCB basically in, uh, in addition to that also is to ensure that the funds of the Sahal customers, the Islamic side of the bank, mm -hmm. does not get commingled with the conventional bank mm -hmm. funds. So not it's physically, an entirely, entirely separate, separate entity. entity. We run on a totally different uh, uh, server, uh, I mean sorry, uh, uh, ledger. Okay, we can at any one time know this is how much money of the customers we're holding, this is how much funds we've given, and these funds on excess liquidity from our side does not get in any way invested in non-Sharia compliant um, uh, uh, ways. For example, if the bank has to look at its position at the end of the day and say how much uh, liquidity or ex surplus liquidity we have, mm -hmm. the Sahal side of the business is not included because, mm -hmm. of course, what the bank would normally do with excess liquidity is to go and invest in government papers yeah. to do uh, overnight lending to other banks, which is interest-based. So we've put all these measures in place to ensure that separation of funds, independence of our Sharia board, and also ensuring that the product and services, we basically follow the best international practice, the standards set by OFI to ensure that this product meets the international practice, in the international best practice. Thank you, thank you so much. Sheikh, we're getting a lot of comments, some of which are written in language that we couldn't understand, but again, in the interest of time, <laughs> okay. I'll just pick one by Sheikh Hassin. says, Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, Mashallah, Brother Faisal, this, is, this will help in getting rid of riba, which is described as war between Allah and you. May Allah protect us, inshallah. Amen. That is on Facebook and a lot of messages coming in. Aban, I don't know, you can just maybe just forward them on my WhatsApp as uh, these questions are coming in. Maybe two questions 
for our guest <coughs> tonight. I'm seeing again a number of them on YouTube as well. Aban, maybe just for them to be on WhatsApp and then we can be able to just sieve them through and uh, select two. I've given you that autonomy as a producer and director. Just send me two questions that we can ask our guest here tonight uh, about Islamic banking and KCB South Banking. Mr. Molu, about CSR opportunities, are these available at KCB Sahal Banking? I mean, because Islam is coming from a position of a communal kind of setup where the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that one is not a believer if he sleeps full and the neighbor is hungry. You know, then you're not a true Muslim, you're not a true believer. So is there a window or... Are there chances of corporate social responsibilities that KCB Sahal Banking engages in? Thank you, thank you, Brother Faisal. Um, I'll come to Sahal specifically, but generally KCB mm -hmm. has undertaken a lot of uh, corporate social responsibilities. Yeah. Um, uh, just to mention a few, and uh, we of course have the KCB Foundation, yeah. uh, which undertakes a lot of uh, corporate social responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, including what we call to Jiri basically mm -hmm. um, uh, training programs for artisans for people to develop their their skills we also sponsor a lot of uh, students uh, when they are going to the uni to, to, to uh, from primary to secondary mm -hmm. and also from secondary to to to, to higher uh, institutions of learning mm -hmm. uh, the, at the beginning of uh, this year uh, when there was um, the appeal for um, i mean to help people that of course, this was countrywide. The people that were affected by the drought, mm -hmm. the bank actually donated over 100 and, uh, 150 million towards that effort. Okay, so the bank has been doing a lot in terms of that. And I think um, if I can also go back, mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was just joining the bank in the 1990s, for example, yeah. KCB took the opportunity to provide what you don't call the graduate loan scheme. A lot of graduates were coming out of the universities with skills, be they say uh, engineers, uh, doctors, uh, veterinary doctors, and yet they are not getting formal employment. So we provided loans to this. To this, to this That's this, through the foundation? Through, no, before the foundation. Before the foundation, the okay. Okay. Imagine even uh, Juakali, for example, the people that uh, do the Juakali works yeah, at, at, yeah. at uh, uh, Machakos bus stage, for example. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. provided loans even to those people even in the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to Sahal, at the beginning of this year also, uh, you know, during the time when there was a lot of appeal for, 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 for people to donate to us, the, uh, uh, alleviating the effect of the drought, yeah. uh, we gave five million from Sahal side. Uh, and also during Ramadan, you know, this year we felt like, okay, there's a lot of, a lot of hunger. Uh, a lot of people have been affected by the drought. Yeah. After the drought, a lot of rains came and then there was a flooding. Okay, so we gave some money through uh, 10 of our branches. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think each of the branches, we gave an average of about half a million shillings. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do, do food donations. Uh, each packet costing around 3,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. In each of the 10 branches, 168 families. Now, if you multiply that with an average of five persons per family, over, over 5,000, over 8,000 people, benefited. basically we benefited from ah, this. So we are, we are undertaking that. We've also helped uh, a few students pay their school uh, tuition fees, mm -hmm. both at secondary school mm -hmm. and also at the university. Yeah. yeah. Allow me just to cut you there and uh, take you straight to Beatrice's question. Beatrice from Malindi is asking, does the pro prohibition of riba apply equally to both Muslims and non-Muslims, like the prohibition of riba? Is it extended to non-Muslims as well? Beatrice from Malindi is asking. Thank you, Beatrice. Uh, I, I think, yes, uh, in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. I don't remember the specific verses, mm -hmm. but interest is equally prohibited. Of course, for Muslims, it is more pronounced, the prohibition is more pronounced and more uh, practiced. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think for if, if, if a Muslim, I mean non-Muslims, Christians specifically, if they read through some of the Old Testaments mm -hmm. uh, and also the New Testament, I think in the Gospel of Luke, I think I don't specifically remember the specific verse, yeah. they are prohibition of interest. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does definitely apply to everybody because it is exploitive. Okay, it is very, very exploitive. Even if, 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 if in the ju 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 Judaism, mm -hmm. it is also equally prohibited. In fact, in all the Ab Abrahamic faiths, Charging and paying or receiving of interest is strongly prohibited. Prohibited. Yes. Wow. Okay. Thanks so much. Last but not least, uh, this is uh, Abdul from Nakuru. 
Abdul from Nakuru is asking about the turnaround time for payment. Just basically, I'm trying to summarize mm -hmm. the question. It's a bit long. Basically, the turnaround time for payment. How 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 is it? Is it is it standard in terms of uh, the amount commensurate to the amount, or how exactly does it work? The payment plans and time around time. Do you have like a standard pay, manual? Payment for is, I hope facilities. Facility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, each facility or each customer needs uh, is, is treated differently. We don't we don't do a blanket um, repayment terms. For example, depending on the ability and the willingness of the customer to get out of the I mean, out of debt, basically. So each customer has got his own particular needs, okay, abilities in terms of financial muscles. Mm -hmm. So we can negotiate the repayment. Yes, there are some facilities like, for example, the check off facility, those uh, for, for, for salaried people. Mm -hmm. The maximum that we allow is almost up to eight years. But for mortgages, for example, we can even go for salaried people up to 25 years, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Commercial mortgages up to 10 years. But within that range, definitely there's, there's, there is a, a room for accommodation. If you want to pay slightly for of a longer period or shorter period, you can be accommodated. And, and, and when someone falls short of, uh, for example, paying the loan, for example, on a due date, when he's agreed to be paying, for example, every quarter, but again, the business did not pan out as he had projected there's some flexibility there is some well. flexibility there is some flex, f f flexibility uh, what we are doing in the, for, for, for Sharia compliance you know when somebody defaults mm -hmm. he may be having a genuine reason to de of default but also there are those who default basically refusing to pay so what we've done so that we are very fair to the customer mm -hmm. uh, for Sharia compliance on our side of Sahal banking basically mm -hmm. uh, the first 14 days we don't charge you any penalties so I'll have to guess, engage you, Brother Faisal. Yes, your facility was due for repayment on the 27th of April. Today is 1st of, uh, 2nd of May. <coughs> Excuse me. Why have you not paid? What's not okay, happening? What's happened? Mm. If I found that... You don't you bring auctioneers directly. No, no, no. <laughs> First of all, establish the reason. Yeah. And if the reason is genuine, beyond your control, mm -hmm. then definitely we'll, we'll, we'll not even charge you the penalties and we'll give you a moratorium on the repayment. Definitely, the, the set of, uh, I mean, the, the, the accommodation is also available on the conventional side, mm -hmm. but on the conventional side, you know, they immediately you fail behind uh, in, in a repayment, yeah. day one, penalties start setting in. Uh, but for us, get that window of 14 days, I talk to the customer to find out the reason why he has defaulted. Yes. It is on the 15th day. If I'm convinced the reasoning for the default or is genuine, is genuine yeah. we will not charge you anything. Last but not least, a staunch Manchester United fan and supporter, Abba Shihemi, on the gallery is asking one final question that I'm going to ask you to please answer it as brief as possible. Do you buy out facilities? For example, if he had taken a facility from a different bank, can you buy that facility out from that bank and then he start working with you? Exactly. We do. We have a specific product for taking, uh, buying out um, loans from yeah. other banks. Specifically, uh, more with more emphasis on those who, for purposes of uh, their faith, are Muslims. Okay. I'm in Riba. I want to get out of Riba. I want to come into Sharia Compliance. Yes, we'll give you opportunity to buy you out of that bank to come to Sharia Compliance. Thanks so much, Mr. Mulhakama. Shukran, Thank you. Thank you. I'm being Thank told you that I need to get out of the studio in the next five seconds because an advert is playing and uh, we need to get money from that, you know, when submitting our logs. Guys, thank you so much for keeping it live. My name is Faisal Kasim. See you next week, same place, same time. Aban, that was less than five seconds. Take it away. Sati sana. Thank you. Oh. Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Uislamu ni dini yenye mpangilio ulio kamili na taratibu zake humpa fursa kila nja kuifahamu na kuelewa. Islamu yoyote lazima achukue jukumu la kuifahamu dini yake.
kuanzia kwenye shahada ashhadu nakiri kwa moyo kisha usafi wa kimwili hapo ndipo huanza safari ya kumwabudu Mola wake usikose kujenga nasi kila siku ya Jumamosi live kwenye kipindi ufahamu Uislamu ili ujifunze mengi usiyojua kutoka Horizon TV